Hi, Rishikesh. Hi, Swadina. Hi, Shmriti. Hi, Maheshwari. Hi, Dr. Nidhi. Hi, Avista. Hadi, hi. Hi, Monica. Hi, everyone. A very good evening. So welcome to our final live session this week. So in this final live session, session five of MCQs discussion, we'll focus on a few more additional topics in the form of MCQs. I hope you guys are all ready. And before we start, how was your day? And also, as we are, I have been reminding right from session one, always keep these three factors in mind, especially when you're attending these live sessions. Of course, I'm not talking about preparation mantra, but I'm talking about the three factors which are more specific to these live sessions. First and foremost, whatever topic or concept or multiple choice question you come across in these live sessions, assume that they're going to be repeated in the final exam so that that gives you a sense of seriousness and you will not take anything for granted. And second, do maintain notes. It can be keywords, key points. It doesn't matter how you maintain notes. Do it as per your convenience so that it's going to help you at a later time, especially just before the exam. Consider this very, very important. And third, enjoy the process. Active participation enables you to enjoy the process. It's as simple as that, right? And also, as we have been discussing in the 5am club, your conscious mind, our conscious mind is able to focus on one thing at a time. So just do that. And I'm sure you'll enjoy the process no matter what task it is. So with these inputs, let's go ahead with our MCQs discussion. I hope you guys are all ready. And also keep in mind that we have a score uh, to keep. So maximum score is 20. Let's see how many of you are going to score 20 upon 20. So here we go. Yeah, hi, Kritika. Hi, subscribe. Hi, Vinita. Very good evening. Yes, first and foremost, before we start our session, I just wanted to bring this uh, all to your attention. So, yeah. Yes, as you know, we, we launched regular batch towards NEET MDS 2023 this October. And also uh, today, we have launched crash course with focus on grant tests. Uh, towards upcoming entrance, that is NEET MDS 2022. So those who are planning to, you know, start your preparation or revise in this final phase of your preparation for NEET MDS 2022, you can check out details of our crash course in our website, ptpdacademy.com, and also in our e-classes general section. Entire information up to date has been updated to these websites. And also those who are planning uh, for one year plus preparation, that is, uh, NEET MDS 2023, you can check out details of our regular batch, which we launched this October, right? So you can drop a mail at proudtobedentist.gmail.com or you can check our website, ptpdacademy.com, as you can see at the bottom of your screens. Now, with these inputs, without much delay, let's go ahead with our MCQs discussion. Hi, Danish. Hi, Rish. So today's 5 a.m. session, it was lively and lovely as usual. And here we go with our first question, high social lenders. So we have two statements, statement one and statement two. So which of the following is right or wrong? Let's go through those statements now. Statement one, the presence of inflammation of soft tissue without bone loss in the context of implants is termed perimplantitis. Statement two, it is generally recommended that implant patients are seen at least on an annual basis. So which options would you choose? Which statement do you think is right or which statement do you think is wrong or do you think both are right or both are wrong? So in the context of implants, dental implants, presence of inflammation of soft tissue without bone loss is termed perimplantitis. Statement two, it is generally recommended that implant patients are seen at least on an annual basis. So what's your opinion? So do post your answers. And as I said, based on your responses, your scores, you can award scores accordingly. So in the meantime, let's review some information. 
So if you remember in one of the previous live sessions in, the, in this week itself, I mentioned about review or recall of implant patients every six months, right? In fact, it varies for cleaning purposes, right? Uh, to maintain hygiene. So as per standard literature, you know, uh, it can be review, uh, can be done every three months, six months, or even one year, right? So just keep that in mind. And coming to the terminology is perimplantitis. Let's look into uh, what standard literature is mentioning. So it's generally recommended that patients are seen at least on an annual basis, but in many cases, they will also require routine hygienist treatment at three, four, six months interval according to individual's requirements. Keep that in mind. And also any concerns, symptoms or signs should be noted. A soft tissue evaluation should look at the health of surrounding perimplant mucosa, probing depths, clinical attachment loss, bleeding on probing can be recorded. The presence of inflammation of soft tissues without bone loss is termed peri-implant mucositis. Inflammation with probing depths 5 mm or greater bleeding or exudate and loss of bone is termed peri-implantitis. So there is loss of bone in case of peri-implantitis, right? I hope you got the clue. So when it comes to peri-implant mucositis or peri-implant mucositis treatment, the former, it may respond to simple plaque control measures, but in case of peri-implantitis, it requires professional debridement of the affected implant surfaces using non-surgical or open surgical approach. If this is not treated, it could lead to progressive bone resorption and loss of implant. And if you remember, peri-implantitis is an important, very short notes question uh, in the university theory exam point of view, right? So when we had no idea about peri-implantitis, based on terms, uh, we used to elaborate the definition within, uh, with the hope that we would get at least one mark out of two marks since it's an important, very short uh, answer question. So peri, around implant, itis means infection, inflammation. So it is inflammation of soft tissues in and around the implant. At least half mark guaranteed, but that's in case of university theory exam. But in entrance, the beauty is you need to be specific. You need to be precise. You need to be accurate. So let's see what you have chosen as more appropriate answer. Option B is right answer. Statement one is false. Statement two is true. It seems there is a combination of A and B and even C. <laughs> okay, Rish, yes, we have e-classes and test series website which can be accessed from any smart device. And once you register to our courses, we provide access credentials. You can check, you can in fact check your mail. Uh, we replied to your mail today, yeah. So we don't need an app to run our course. Our uh, e-classes test series websites will serve the purpose. In fact, they are customized for smartphone uses as well. Yeah. So as majority of you, if I can say, option B is right answer. Please award yourself plus four and rest of you minus one. Don't get demotivated. You still have four more questions to go. Coming to second question. Identify the violet colored thread-like material, which is pointed out. Is it dental floss, retraction cord, suture material, none of the above. So which one do you think is more appropriate answer? And also you can see a stainless steel instrument. Uh, using this instrument, hand instrument, we're trying to, you know, push in or pluck in this, uh, push in this material, or uh, this uh, strand-like material or thread-like material into the sulcus of gingiva. And you can clearly see that the facial surfaces of a tooth or teeth for that matter, uh, central, uh, uh, yeah, two centrals, lateral, the facial surfaces have been reduced. So let me give you a hint. Here we're trying to attempt, or we're trying to record the margins of preparation as evident in this illustration, right? So now you have gone through this illustration in depth. So which one do you think is more appropriate answer, is it? Uh, dental flaws, retraction cords, suture material, none of the above. Uh, yes, Danish says BB. By the way, we have an instrument called BB, scissors, which we discussed yesterday. Are you talking about that BB or are you talking about option B? 
Okay, let's review some literature in regard to this. It seems majority of you are getting it right. So the purpose of the function of this instrument is to pack or push into gingival sulcus the material, right? So it is pushed into the sulcus, right? So that we're trying to retract the gingiva from the crown margins or finish margins. So it's packed into gingival sulcus to retract gingiva to get an accurate impression of prepared crown margins. Right, elastomeric impressions, you need accurate uh, reproduction of details. It can be soaked in hemostatic agent to control bleeding as most impression materials are moisture sensitive. So it is nothing but gingival retraction cord as majority of you have rightly chosen. So do award yourself plus four marks. Well done everyone. So option B is right answer. Very good. Now let's move on to the next question. After developing bite wing radiograph, a dentist realizes that she has too much overlap between contacts of its and teeth. This is an error caused by option A, increased vertical angulation, decreased vertical angulation. Option B, option C, incorrect horizontal angulation. Option D, beam not aimed at center of film. So you can see that particular bite wing where the contacts are clearly overlapping. So the purpose of bite wing is not being served. So what could be the reason for this error? You know how a bite wing should be. You have seen an illustration in SPS live session. So the central beam of X-ray should, you know, hit perpendicular or it should be perpendicular to the contacts orientation. If that's missing, you'll have this horizontal overlap. So I'm sure majority of you will answer it right. So let's review some information in the meantime. So overlapping of the contacts, interproximal areas are overlapped, reducing the diagnostic quality of film, which is due to incorrect horizontal angulation. That is the central X-ray is not directed perpendicular to curvature of arch and through the contacts, leading to this overlap of the contact. So in that case, what do you do? Repeat. We hate the word repeat, but we need a radiographic image of diagnostic quality. Yes, we need to repeat for the benefit of the patient. So as majority of you have uh, rightly chosen, option C is a right answer. So it is an easy one relatively, isn't it? Oh, Priyanka has chosen option B. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, Pallavi B, yeah, that might be for the previous question. Okay, good, good, good. Very good, Pallavi, right. So option C is right answer. Okay, now let's move on to the penultimate question. This, let's see how many of you are going to get it right. What distinguishes a base from a cement from a cavity liner? So what's the distinguishing feature between a base material, a liner material, a varnish, whatever it is? Amount of pulpal protection, biocompatibility of material, degree of hardness, final application thickness. See, first of all, uh, all of these, it can be liner, varnish, base, it can be any of these materials. These are pulp protecting agents. So they're all meant for protecting pulp. I don't think we have a, a gradation on how much protection they offer to pulp, at least in standard literature like Philips. So you can rule it out. Biocompatibility of material, of course, a material has to be biocompatible when you're using it, uh, especially as a pulp protecting agent. So that it doesn't uh, cause any harm to the pulp, no noxious stimuli to the pulp. Degree of hardness, you know, these are not uh, very hard or relatively uh, not hard compared to restorative materials. The same applies to all of these materials. So what's the difference? Is it the final application thickness? If you remember, we've done extensive videos on the same regarding the thickness of various cements, including liners, varnish, bases, etc. in e-classes as well as in YouTube. And also we have some questions in test series, including study club. So let's review some information in the meantime. So final application thickness might vary for these uh, cements. See, as you know, according to Phillips, the minimum thickness of a base has to be 0.7 famine. It's not just about protecting pulp, it's also about providing a strength, replacing dentin, and uh, providing a mechanical strength to, to the overlying restoration. Take, for example, zinc phosphate base, zinc polycarboxylate base, underlying amalgam restoration. And cavity liners, it has to be thin. You need to line the cavity. The thickness varies 
in millimeters, microns, varnish, it is almost in microns. So if you observe these materials, pulp predicting agents, there is variation in final application thickness. And according to area guidelines, you know, uh, the film thickness for luting purpose, it has to be less than 25 microns, ideally, isn't it? So let's review some information. The most important consideration for pulp prediction and restorative techniques is thickness of remaining dentin. In general, cements that are thicker than 2 mm are termed bases. But you know, according to various literatures, these values vary, but usually cement base is thicker. Starting from 0.5 mm or it can be 0.75 mm, the values might vary, it doesn't matter. And there's a function to replace lost dentin beneath restorations, that's the base. A base may be used to provide dermal protection under metallic restorations to increase the resistance to forces of condensation of amalgam or to block out undercuts when taking impressions from cast restorations. This is another important application of bases. And the only distinction between a base cement and a, a cavity liner is their application thickness. See, cements for luting, when you say cement, uh, in the context of luting agents, right? Cement, luting. So uh, cements for luting have a desired film thickness of approximately 15 to 25 microns, as you're all familiar with. Cavity liners, either a solution or suspension liners, they have a desired final film thickness of approximately 5 microns. And bases have final application thickness of approximately 1 to 2, 0.5 to 1 mm or 0.75 mm according to Phillips, right? So just keep these values in mind. And just uh, make sure that you memorize uh, the thickness which we discussed in e-classes as well as in YouTube. So as majority of you have rightly chosen, in fact, uh, yeah, one or uh, two exceptions, but majority of you have chosen option D, which is very impressive. So option D is right answer, well done. So now let's move on to the final question. Let's see how many of you are going to get it right. Concept based, which of the following is most significant in regard to prognosis of a periodontal involved tooth? So which place it decided? Pocket depth, bleeding upon probing, anatomic crown length, attachment loss. So which one do you think is a more appropriate answer? Pocket depth, bleeding upon probing, anatomic crown length, attachment loss. See, pocket depth or attachment loss, we start measuring them from the base of the pocket, but when it comes to pocket depth, it's the distance from the base of the pocket till the gingival margin. But when it comes to attachment loss, you have a standard reference, not the standard references books we're talking about, but CEGS standard reference for measuring attachment loss, which is considered as the most, the most stable landmark. So I think I'm giving you a quick clue. So which one do you think is more appropriate answer? Okay, so try answering the question. In the meantime, let's review some literature. See, first of all, Pocket depth, there can be variation. Uh, without variation, attachment loss. Attachment loss in the sense, there's actually loss of attachment of tissues to the tooth. This compromising the periodontium. So attachment loss is much more significant than periodontal pocketing. Because with attachment loss, the supporting structures are being destroyed. But what about pocket depth? There can be pseudo enlargement. Uh, without attachment loss, isn't it? So pocket depth is the distance between the base of the pocket and the level margin. The level of attachment, on the other hand, is the distance between the base of the pocket and a fixed point on crown such as CEJ, cement enamel junction. Changes in the level of attachment can be caused, caused only by gain or loss of attachment and thus provide a better indication of degree of periodontal destruction. And please remember, and do make a note of these points, the two most critical parameters for the prognosis of a periodontal involved tooth are attachment loss and mobility, right? Let me repeat. Two most critical parameters for prognosis of a periodontal involved tooth are attachment loss and mobility. In periodontics, factors often considered in generation of a prognosis include, but are not limited to tooth type, percussion involvement, bone loss, pocket depth, tooth mobility, occlusal force, patients, home care, presence of systemic disease, cigarette smoking. So various factors which do have their say in the prognosis. But the most critical one or the most significant one is attachment loss as I think majority of you have chosen option D, right? So also, yes, you know, we have prognosis which is classified as excellent, good, fair, questionable, hopeless, and uh, you know the depth of it. 
And if you have any queries or you need assistance, you feel free to get back through mail for further clarification. Finally, pocketing can increase or decrease depending on amount of inflammation without attachment loss. This is very, very important. This is the basis for option D being right answer. And let me repeat, pocketing can increase or decrease depending on amount of inflammation without attachment loss. On the other hand, extensive attachment loss and gingival recession may be accompanied by shallow pockets. That is poor prognosis of tooth. So option D, attachment loss is the right answer because there is actual uh, loss of supporting uh, structures, right? It's uh, supporting structures that are being destroyed when you say attachment loss, right? So those who have chosen option D, do award yourself plus four. Well done, right? It seems you're very sound in your basics really very well done and keep this enthusiasm and momentum going now do present your scores and i would love to review your scores right so these are some of the topics which i wanted to highlight in this specific video and if you observe in this entire uh, week so five days, five sessions, we focused mostly on clinical subjects. In the upcoming uh, sessions, live sessions, MCQ's discussion will shift towards basic subjects with clinical orientation or clinical application. We'll try our level best. Your feedback is always welcome. And as I said, this is the final session of the week. And next week, uh, we're not planning any live sessions, at least according to schedule impromptu if we plan any live session depending upon my time availability i'll definitely update you guys through updates group so those who are not part of updates group drop a mail or you can check our website you'll find the link of telegram updates group over there and we have updated our, our website up to date right so that's it so for this week we had almost not almost exactly 10 sessions 5 a.m. sessions had been challenging even for me initially for one to two days, but later on, it was amazing. You'll get used to waking up early in the morning. Once you get used to waking up early in the morning, you have the entire time for yourself. And one should give at least, at least 21 days to get used to a new habit. So if you're not able to wake up one day and if you're feeling demotivated, no, it doesn't work out that way. Please do have patience and uh, keep trying Right? It's not keep trying until you fail, you'll eventually succeed, but keep trying. If you don't try, you'll fail, isn't it? So next week, mostly we'll not have any live sessions because we're occupied with some other, um, uh, some other work. But if in case I, I can squeeze out any time for you, I'll definitely consider uh, making live sessions and I'll let you guys know at least five to six hours prior. By noon time, I'll post you an update. And I'll give you a heads up, okay? Right. And uh, after next week, we'll plan our regular live sessions as usual, okay? So 5 a.m. sessions, uh, 9 p.m. sessions. So I thought 7 p.m. would be a favorite because Telegram vote, according to Telegram vote, 7 p.m. was a favorite. But uh, with hundreds of votes in YouTube, it's 9 p.m., which is uh, the most favorite time. So we'll uh, try to con continue this format, 5 a.m. club, general discussion, meditation, and to make sure that there is positivity in your day, right? So that will be the objectives of our 5 a.m. club as we have been doing this entire week. And 9 p.m. sessions, it's exclusive subject discussion with motivation at the end. So I hope it's fine. And of course, your feedback is always welcome. Feel free to get back through mail at proudtobedentist at gmail.com. Also check our website, ptbdacademy.com. And as I mentioned, we have launched two courses uh, this month, a uh, regular batch for uh, NEET MDS 2023 aspirants and crash course for NEET MDS 2022 aspirants. You can check our website, you'll find all the details over there, or you can check out today's uh, video, a recorded video on YouTube, or just reach us through mail. Danish, uh, no, we haven't checked your mail. In fact, we have uh, mails uh, pending from uh, Smriti's mail. Smriti Sivudas mail onwards, we have almost uh, several mails pending. We'll check out and we'll get back to you. And regarding grant schedule, this crash course, 
uh, we released a grand test schedule. The, the grand test schedule will be applicable for all the batches, regardless of your initial schedule, because whether you are in regular batch, Mission 12, Neo 9, Summer Batch, Project Jewels, Comprehensive Batch, or Crash Course, no matter which batch you are in, if you observe along the test series schedule, we post a star and we, uh, we try to elaborate saying that the grand test schedule will be released once exam date is announced. So exam date has been announced on July 23rd and uh, so, and today we released grand test schedule. So grand test will be starting from October 10th, that is this Sunday onwards. Every Sunday, there will be one grand test till December 12th. So last one week, no exams whatsoever. So your grand test, there are total 10 grand tests starting from October 10th, every Sunday till December 12th, 2021. The total of 10 grand tests, 240 multiple choice questions, one fourth negative marking, you'll have case based, you'll have image based questions, you'll have uh, lots and lots of challenging questions, not to terrify you, not to demotivate you, but in an attempt to provide you as much standard information as possible. And it's going to be an amazing opportunity for all of you, those who have registered, uh, to practice these challenging questions, right? Yes, and uh, and before we conclude, since this is the last uh, live session of this week, you guys have any general questions, uh, do let me know. Uh, feel free to post in the comment section. I would love to answer them. Danish, uh, sleeping early uh, sometimes is not possible when your day is not so effective or when there is less time for exams. Please guide. See, the reason why, see, you're saying uh, when there is less time for exams, since there is less time, you should be sleeping early. You might think that's something opposite to what you're saying, but if you have less time, you should sleep early because if you sleep early, when I say early, I'm not talking about 7 p.m. or 8 p.m. or 9 p.m., at least 9.30, at least 10 p.m. If you try to sleep early, you will try to wake up early. I mean, you'll automatically wake up early, right? In fact, uh, yeah, some of you are sharing your experiences about waking up early with 5 a.m. club, which is very impressive. So when you sleep early, let me complete my point, you'll wake up early and you'll have rest of the time, you'll have plenty of time for preparation. Let's assume you're sleeping at 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock. Large majority of cases, what happens is our time is being wasted on social media. Our time is being wasted on other miscellaneous things because as the day progresses, right, our willpower decreases. And we're not uh, so confident and exuberant as we are in the daytime compared to nighttime. So my point is, if you sleep early because of less time, you can make more time. If you say, or if that's not the case, you say, sir, we, we are studying very hard till 1 p.m., 2 p.m., I mean, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., even 3 a.m., we're not even sleeping. If that's the case, if you're trying to study during the nighttime, that's fine. But the issue with that is the concentration potential, the distractions you often face. And what about your biologic clock? See, you're not in harmony with nature. Then what happens is you will not experience that positive energy. When I say it, you should experience it. I mean, those who are all attending our 5 a.m. club. Initially, it will be a struggle, but once you get used to, you know, you're going to have a kind of day which is so much amazing that you cannot simply express in words. Take my word. So you need to experience it. Do not take my words for granted. Don't believe what I say. Just experience it. Wake up early, but not by sacrificing sleep. Try to sleep early. Have a quality sleep. You know, uh, then wake up early and you'll see all the difference. How you can make most out of your day. And to Danish uh, uh, query in a specific, what if there is some challenge that you're, um, because of some issue, you, you couldn't sleep early in a particular day. That's fine. If you miss out uh, once or twice in a week, that's fine. But if you are used to waking up early in the morning, no matter when you sleep, you'll wake up early. And in, in specific cases where you, you think you are uh, not able to sleep early because of some issues, in those situations, try to have light dinner. Uh, that's a kind of compensation which you can do, right? So that's all I can give from my side. Danish, I hope these inputs are helpful.
Oh, Danish, you got a reply to your mail. That's wonderful to hear. Sujay, Indian Air Force Day, sir. Oh, yes, yes, Sujay. Uh, I've seen uh, Prime Minister uh, uh, quoting the same. Yeah. Okay. Happy Indian Air Force Day. And thanks to all those warriors, we are safe in the comfort of our homes for their gallant efforts. Vinita, sir, should we join separately for grantees? No, not at all, uh, Vinita. It's part and parcel of a full course. So those who are registered for full course, you need not join grantees separately. If you observe your uh, course PDF, you have a star mark saying your grantees schedule will be released once you have a tentative of, uh, day of exam. So since we have December 19th as tentative date, we have released grantees schedule today. So you need not register for grantees separately. From October 10th onwards, all the registered students of PTPD Academy will be accessing grant tests in their respective test series accounts. Danish, you're welcome, Danish. Yes, Sujay, 8th October, yes, in an Air Force day. Thank you for bringing it up. And in fact, I, I forgot to review your scores. Dr. Sana, 16, wonderful. Smriti, Hi, Shruti is 15. Good. Vinita, 20 upon 20. Impressive. Priyanka, Subkal, 16. Very good, Priyanka. So the first question, did you lose for the first question? I think first question, majority of you got it wrong. Yeah. Maheshwari, 20. Very good, Maheshwari. Kritika, 15. Impressive. Monica, 20 upon 20. Good. Swadino, 15. Good. Hadi, 15. Uh, Danish, 15, 15, 15, 45, but the maximum score is only a 20, right? Okay, maybe for your enthusiasm, yes, we can give you 45 upon 20. Uh, Yavista, 15, nice. Rish, 12, good. Okay. That's nice. Okay, Rish, okay, Vinita. Okay, everyone. So, good night. And as I said, next week, we're not going to have any live sessions, but from next week, I mean, after next week, we'll definitely plan regular live sessions. We'll uh, post an update. Just keep a tab on updates group. You know the protocol. If there is any update from our side, we'll post it in Google group as well as uh, Telegram group. So these both are our updates group. And those who are not part of it, just drop a mail at proudtobedentist.gmail.com. You will get all the details, including all the links. Right. So wish you all the best. Love you all. Just keep these three aspects in mind before you sleep always. You're working hard. You're working consistently and just believe in yourself. The world is all yours. Okay. So love you all. Good night. Take care.